Well, good morning, Bob. Good morning, Bill. We've got lots of things to talk about. The 10 years ticked up a little, but not much. Yeah. It's still down around 2.6, which is way below what anybody forecast. Exactly. And the Fed just uh, came out with an analysis where they looked at the uh, inflation-adjusted rates, you know, they uh, low, long the way out, low, long low, ways, low, 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 low. and uh, backed out what the inflation expectations are, and, and they're not high. Low, 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 low. <laughs> the uh, market thinks that there's not going to be any significant inflation for years to come. Well, the European Central Bank last week had a big announcement. Uh -huh. They they basically took the rate to negative territory. Yeah. I and mean, the real rate. Right, and so, you know, there's just all this money that's sitting out there, no place to put it, and uh, yet the Wall Street Journal, in its own inimical way, came out and uh, suggested that the Fed should raise interest rates. Well, <laughs> wow. So, uh, is that going to be a 14 event, a 15 event, or a 16 event right. when they do their first raise? Right now, it looks like it's going to be 15 or 16 or 17. I mean, it's, there's just there's just no. Uh, they just uh, did some more analysis, and the uh, equity extraction out of houses is continuing to be negative, which means uh, people are paying down faster than they're pulling out. Exactly, and uh, people are just real still. Uh, gun shy about mortgages. That almost implies that there's an expectation of deflation. Well, uh, it, it could imply that, absolutely, or it also could imply that people uh, no longer see real estate as the secure investment that it once was. Well, we look at bank, banks' balance sheets, and when they when they we look at that, they're holding less and less mortgages. Now, in some interviews this past week, some notable bankers said that's because there's not any mortgages available to buy. The supply has been constrained. Yeah, and you know, they, they, everybody's talking about loosening the uh, lending criteria, but we're not seeing it. The applications were down again last week, and uh, we're just not well, seeing any volume. I, yeah. I don't know about you, but nobody I know can qualify. The credit score is <laughs> way too high. Well, that's because <laughs> we're from Mississippi. <laughs> I mean, the credit scores. And I talked to a big lender last week, and they were discussing their, their average FICO, and they said it was 742, uh -huh. which is a big number. Yeah, about 100 below yours. Right? Hey, uh, <laughs> you know, it's about 200 above mine. <laughs> Nobody in Mississippi's got one above. Since I'm a native Mississippi, I can say this, above 500. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so anyway, what what's the make of all this? Well, there is some good news, uh, I suppose. You, you, you know, okay, okay, you're going to qualify. <laughs> you're going to qualify the good news. All right. U.S. employment is at an all-time high. We've been expecting this announcement for a while, but last week the uh, numbers came out at an all-time high. It uh, finally exceeded where we were in 2007. Okay. Well, of course, the population has gone way up. Oh, no, 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 no. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> who's, who's qualifying here? Population has gone way up. So, so I know the numbers, the numbers in an absolute sense look good, but in a relative sense, not so good. From 2007 until the time we got back to where we were in 2007, it was 76 months. Okay. All right. To put that in perspective, the uh, 2001... Over six years. Uh, uh, yeah. The uh, 2001 recession was uh, 46 months. The 1990 recession was 31 months. But the Great Depression was 120 months. Well, so, so what are you saying? Are you saying that we're due for another recession? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that the extent of this recession was massive. It was you a know, long recovery long time, and you know, slow. And, uh, you know, when you put that in perspective with these other recessions, it's much, much longer than they were. Although several economists, several economists have said, we're, you know, we're getting at the end of this, this rebound. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, you know, a lot of there were several articles over the weekend talking about the fact that the housing recovery that everyone was talking about doesn't seem to actually be uh, recovering very well. It doesn't, feel it doesn't have many legs, and uh, so you know, there's a new book that just came out, 
uh, Larry Summers says it's the most significant economic book of a century. I mean, of the decade. Is it his book? No. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it's it's by a guy uh, uh, last name Mian and another guy by last name of Sufi, and uh, it's called The House of Debt. And uh, they say it's really not the bank's fault as much as all the mortgage lenders' fault. And uh, all of this... Uh, the mortgage lenders caused it? Like the, the, the non-bank mortgage lenders? That's what they're saying. You know? so, and so they... I haven't read it. Well, that's, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll talk is, about it. This, this is from Summers. Uh, yeah, 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 his analysis, his book review, so to speak. Yeah, and uh, basically they're saying that all these, uh, all the borrowers got so overextended that uh, when they started, uh, you know, seeing their house prices drop, uh, basically they cut back their spending dramatically because there was no equity to, to right. buy it. And that reduced the spending in those uh, local economies, which then further dropped the housing prices and it just spiraled down. Well, years ago, the Fed did a lot of research about the wealth effect of an increase in housing. So as your house goes up in value, you feel wealthier, so you spend more money. And it's been a long time since I read that study. I recollect that there was something like for every $1,000 increase in the value of your house, you spent another $5 per year. Yeah. And that's a lot of money. It is. And, and, and one of the things they're thinking now is that people have, you know, particularly the younger people who are uh, getting ready to buy, you know, would normally be buying a house, are looking at this devastation that's occurred from people buying houses and they're being very, very cautious. Are you saying it. there's a psychological effect yeah. investing? Absolutely. <laughs> so, so if you look at others and they've been burned, you want to stay out. I thought all finance was with psychology. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so, so let's, let's step back a second and, and, by the way, they have a new service in Vegas. Oh yeah? Yes, they do. Well, don't, I don't called, know if called, I want that on this show. Well, it's okay. This is, a, this, is a, this is a kid friendly service. Oh, okay. right, right. And, and so, well, uh, sort of a, a, a young kid as in a young adult I see, friendly right. service. Well, I'm not worried about that. And, 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 and so there's a new service, it's called a hangover service. Maybe oh, yeah. you've read about it. No, I haven't. Maybe you've experienced it. Uh, uh, so basically what happens is if you have a hangover, you can go and you can, it's a, there's a service at the airport, uh, uh, and you can, what you can do is get some oxygen, uh, uh, and I think some mortgage bankers need some oxygen. Well, uh, 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 and in addition to that, it gives you, they give you a shot of vitamins. And well, when I was a graduate student in physics, we had this one cylinder of oxygen that we kept just for that. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah, I do. had a solution. That's why physics majors are so happy exactly. all the time. Right? <laughs> well, so, so, yeah. It's interesting, last week, rates were down low, I mean, comparatively speaking, and yet we saw applications decline. What's well, the make of all that? Well, I think There's it's no just demand. psychology. So, yeah, oh, yeah I the, think it's uh, just people are a little worried, they're hesitant. Plus, the banks have, you know, it's just not that easy to get a loan. Even if they're lo uh, loosening things, it's still tight, relatively speaking. And uh, so, you know, people are just hesitant to move. And then, of course, there's still, what, 18 million property owners who are still underwater and yes that's you know really good that it's down from 31 million but that's still 18 million that are not looking to buy and move up you know a good dose of inflation would help everybody exactly but there's no inflation uh, on the on the horizon and the fed has tried to reinflate things they know if we have some inflation moderate inflation uh -huh. that would help everybody's outlook Right, but the Wall Street Journal is worried about inflation, so they want us to raise interest rates to keep inflation down. They're worried about <laughs> they're worried about inflation yes, in the, in the long the term. Yes, that's the reason they keep wanting to raise the rates. Well, I think they're a little misguided. Well, they're, all these papers are a little misguided on some days. People have papers some have good are more days. than others. So people have good days and bad days. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's talk about one more topic for our our listeners today. Let's talk about what's to make of all this regulation. We, we, we need to touch on regulation a little. Some of the Dodd-Frank regulations are just now really coming yeah. to fruition. Well, you know, there's a lot of hand-wringing and, and talk about how this is going to be costly and it's going to limit the ability of banks to effectively produce mortgages. Um, but, but, you know, it's, people 
look at the problems that have occurred in the past and they are looking for some assurance that this is not going to happen again. And the way that we provide that insurance, assurance typically is with regulation, right? And so the markets went out of control for a while and that caused a lot of, a lot of serious pain to a lot of particularly small uh, investors. You yes, know? yes and, indeed. Uh, and so people are looking to have some protection against that. They don't want to know all the details. They just want to be assured that it's a safe market to get into. And so when does that happen? When, is it, when do the sharks go away? When is it safe to go back into the water? Well, you know, like you said, a lot of this stuff is just coming into effect. It's, it's going to have to work through the system. Banks are going to have to get uh, used to the uh, regulations. People are going to have to develop some new expectations. We're going to have to get back to some steady state. And, and you know, it's going to be at least another year. So you think the Fed is on hold through 15? Or they, 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 so you think it's 16 before they go up? I do. So you heard it here, folks. The esteemed <laughs> Dr. Dorsey, through 15, we're down low, and we're still going to be low in 16, but they start up in 16. Maybe I need some oxygen. Maybe you do. <laughs> Maybe you need some B vitamins. Well, this is FNC Morning View. I'm Bill Redwood, Bob Dorsey. You all have a fantastic week. Bye, Bob. Bye.